Hi everybody, welcome to another video in this quick math section 1.5 nested quantifiers. Uh, nested quantifiers is just where we have the uh, quantifiers inside another one. It is necessary because sometimes we have more than one variable. Uh, for example, if we say for every real number, it has an inverse. So there are two uh, variables here. Every real number, so that whatever it is, there will be an inverse. The inverse and that original number, there are two of them. So we say for every x, there is an inverse. So that x plus y equal to zero. So that's what it means. Right. And then, of course, domain all real numbers. Uh, we can also think this as nested proposition for every x. Uh, there is this y, so that x plus y equal to zero can be with. Uh, for every x, q of x, where q of x is a cis y for p of x y, where p of x y is equal to x plus y equal to zero. But of course, we don't have to spell out all of that. Uh, we just say it, that uh, is easier to understand. Right, now look at some example and see what uh, the meaning of this. For every x, and there's every, for every y, x plus y is equal to y plus x. So meaning that doesn't matter the two numbers are, we can interchange. And what it means here, if we want to spell it out, it is commutative. Uh, property. Yeah, x plus y is equal to y plus x, meaning we can interchange uh, the variation in a sum. Uh, for every x, there is this y, such that x plus y equal to 0. But we talked about this already. That's called the inverse. Uh, properties. And this one for every x, every y, every z, uh, this is associated properties. So that's what it means. Uh, now if we spell it out, we will say it uh, for every x and y. x plus y equal to y plus x. If it both of them have the same quantifiers, we can just say for every x and y rather than say for every x, for every y. Right, this uh, we just have to say for every x. There is this uh, y such that x plus y equal to zero. If we spell it out. And once again, we have all of them are uh, uh, universal. Then we say for every x, y, and z. x plus y plus z equal x plus y plus z. Uh, meaning that x, y, z are the same position. We just decide to add the last two instead of the first two. That's still the same. Uh, translate the following statement into English statement uh, where the domain for both of them consists of real numbers. So we say for every real numbers, if x greater than zero and y is less than zero, then the product is less than zero. So we can say it, uh, if we translate that into English and drop on the intermediate step, we say a product of a positive number and a negative number is negative. Right. Uh, the intermediate step is that uh, a product a positive number and a negative number is negative. So that's what we say. So translate this into English. Uh, we say for every number so Let's just do the intermediate. If x greater than zero, that's not really English when we write like this. Then is product is that than zero? It's not really English. The true English, if we uh, write that, is the product 
of negative of positive negative this is a positive number and a negative number is negative We will translate that into an English uh, statement. Okay. Positive times negative is negative. Right. Uh, thinking nested quantifiers, uh, quantification as loops. Right. Let's say we have for every x or every y, p of x, y is true. So we want this to be if this is true. If this is true. Uh, we go through every value of x at every step look through for all the values of y because it said all x or y if there's some pair of x y p of x is full then it's full and both the inner and outer loop terminate right so uh, we will go for every x through every x uh, so first we start with x which is loop of x and inside there's that loop for y and if there's any values here p x y false then we stop and we say false if the loop does not stop then it's true then the, that original statement is true so we start with uh, the loop through every x and within that we loop every y if any of them that is false we stop and we say the original statement is false if that process will through every possible loop then it's true right now the other way uh, now if we have for every x there's this y such that p of x y is true right so again of course we go for every x and when we find a y we go to we get out of that loop right uh, the inner loop and when a pair of x y is found then we get out of it right so if we find one value for y we do not need to stay it and go in other values of y we just go to the next loop for x and then until we find the y values we just go to the next loop for x and then we just keep doing that if no y is found in the piece y through the outer loop terminate and that has to be false so uh, what we need to do is that we say uh, for every x, there's this y p of x is shown to be false. If there is an x value where we cannot find y, right? And then if every x y is true, if the outer loop and after every step, and we find at least one for each, or we find exactly one for each. Uh, of course, if the domain are infinite, we cannot just loop through everything indefinitely. Next are uh, all the quantifiers. Uh, many mathematicals. A statement involves multiple quantification um, with more than one variable. It is important to note that the order of quantifiers are important. So we cannot just interchange uh, the quantifiers and uh, get the same thing. We'll see that in the next example. Right, so here is simple. Uh, P of x be a statement x plus y equals y plus x. Assume that u is real numbers. Then the, for every x, every y, every y, every x. So this is this have the same values. There's no problem here, because if they have the same universal quantifiers, uh, they can interchange. But we cannot interchange them if they do not have the same. For example, this order is different than this order. So think about this. Uh, this original statement say that for every x there exists a y such that x plus y equal to zero, right? So uh, I give you some example here. Uh, if x is five, then we choose the negative five, so that they add to zero. So doesn't matter what you have for x, you can find y to satisfy that condition. However, if you write for every y there is an x, I am to say, 
the axis y such that every x will work. This will not. If you start with 5, it has to be negative 5. It cannot work on any numbers. So, bottom line is, doesn't matter if you choose the first number for y, there's only one number for x. That makes this statement true. Right? So, the axis y, doesn't matter what the y value is, there's only one value for x to make this false. I mean, only one verse for act to make it true. So in general, this is false. So uh, interchange them will not work. All right. Now let you be real numbers define that uh, the product is equal to zero. What is true here? For every x, every y, if x, y, this is not true. All right. If you take any number x and y, like five times three, it's not going to be zero. All right. So it's false. Because product of, of two numbers may not be zero. Now for every x, there's this y, such that be x, y, right? Now this is true. Because there is this y, so we can choose y to be equal to 0. In that case, of course, x times y is x times 0 equal to 0, right? Doesn't matter what x is, we can choose y to be 0. Uh, likewise, for every x, uh, there's this x, so that doesn't matter what y is, it's still true. And so this is true, because if we choose x to be 0, x times y is just 0 times y, so it doesn't matter what y is, so for every y, that's still 0. So that's why it's still true. And there's this x and there's this y, so that if x, y equal to 0. Now this is true as well, uh, because uh, certainly we can say it 0 times 0 is equal to 0, or 0 times x is equal to 0, or uh, x times 0 is equal to 0. Bottom line is, when we write like this, we can choose x to be 0, y to be 0, or both of them will be 0. And that provides a true statement. Right. Uh, quantification of two variables. So we look at a simple case, only a nested quantification uh, of two variables only. Uh, for every x, for every y, is true for every pair of x and y. Now there exists a pair of x and y for which it is false. Right? So remember, for every, just pay attention here, for every, there is, there is. So universal, uh, existential. Now, watch this, watch this. This is for every x, there exists a y. So, universal, existential, existential, universal. So, because if it's true, the negation have to be false. So, pretty much we write the negation here. Now, every x, I'm sorry, is this x for every y? So, is this x for every y? Now, turn that to universal existential right that how it works of course for the rest in the same way right now let's write this uh, let's give x y z be the statement x plus y equal to z what are the true values of for every x every y there is z and then uh, for that so we said uh, for every x for every y there is z such that Step by Q of X, Y, Z, I'm just going to write that statement itself. Right. So we can choose any X, we can choose any Y, and then we can choose Z that equal X plus Y. So, yeah, so meaning 
a real number plus a real number so it's not a real number so we can do z to make this work so there's maybe one value for z that works right now the next one there exists z such that for every x every y x plus y plus z uh -huh. equal to z by the way we said this one is true because doesn't matter what x and y is we can do z to be its sum not this case we given the sum uh, we can, it will not work for every x or y so this is false right I cannot just give you a sum and say that every other numbers you provide will add up to z I said if I give you z uh, x and y cannot be anything right there may be some restriction there but you cannot just add any two numbers and add up and equal to a given number it's not going to work right uh, here's some application uh, translate the following into logical expression the sum of two positive integers is always positive All right so we can say this two positive integers so we say for every x every y are positive so we have to say it greater than zero and greater than zero implies x y positive right. for every x and every y uh, so in this case we can say the domain is all real number so that all real numbers so if we say it uh, if we switch the domain we say for every x and uh, every y if it's not wrong to write a comma here, but we don't need to. X, Y, positive. And then we say, wait a minute, where is the greater than zero? Well, this if we denote the domain is positive number. Yeah, if we specify the domain, we don't have to write like that. Uh, next, every real number except zero has a multiplicative inverse. So, every real numbers. Like I said, I don't really like to book in this in the sense that if it is the math class, I uh, would just say it every x number, every real numbers, just like that. But uh, we not get to set theory yet, so we cannot run like that. I would say every real number x. If it is not equal to zero, if it, except for zero, it has the multiplicative inverse, meaning there exists a y such that xy multiplicative inverse, meaning the product equal to one. Right. For every x, if it's not zero, it will have an inverse. Okay, straightforward, right? right. Now, next one. Uh, translate the following logical expression uh, to English statements uh, for every x right. uh, x and y are student in the school so we say every student in school f student c of x meaning has a computer so every student has a computer Or there is this y, and uh, or and what is y? F x y meaning they are friend of each other, right? F x y meaning they are friend. So every student has a computer. Or is this another person? that he or she knows that 
his computer. Right, so it's better to participate. Uh, every student has a computer or know somebody that has a computer. Uh, I guess that is the better saying for that. But essentially, that's what it means. Every student has a computer or know someone. Uh, F of X, Y meaning their friends, so they know someone. And where Y has a computer, so they know somebody that has a computer. So either have a computer or know somebody that has a computer. Okay, that's good. Uh, express the following statement into logical expression involving predicates, quantifiers, with domain consists of all people and logical connectives. Right. Everybody has exactly one best friend. So let's say it, uh, best friend is the relation of two people. So we just say B of between two people, uh, let's say between M and M. So meaning they are best friend. So everybody has exactly one best friend, so how do we do that? Alright, everybody, every X, uh, they assist a, a, a person. Right? Everybody have exactly one best friend. Assist somebody says that If X, Y, their best friend, and if there is another person, and that person is not Y, then they're not best friend. So that's really confusing when we write everything like that. So uh, for every person, there is a person that is their best friend and there is no other best friend. So because that is exactly one best friend here, we have to write this. All right, so it's better to say then for every x, there exists uniquely, that uniquely y such that B of X, Y, a friend. Yeah. So that's better. Just write like this. There exists uniquely a friend who is the best friend to X. Right. Next. Uh, there is a woman who takes a flight on every airline in the world. So there are three variables here. A woman. Uh, taking a flight every airline so there is this a woman taking a flight is this a flight on every airline I would just say it, uh, some relation between W F and A so is this a woman who takes a flight? So that is this a flight on every airline where this relation. So, of course, it's, it's easier to write like that. Right. Negating the quantifi uh, nested quantifiers. Uh, so, we talk about this. So, just like what we did with the negation of a quantifier statement, a uh, quantifier statement, uh, there are two things. Negate the statement itself and then change the quantifiers right now for this if we want the negation we have to negate this uh, this turn into existential this turn into every uh, universal and this negate so original said for every x there exists a y such that they are multiplicative inverse uh, opposite to that uh, there is an x so it doesn't matter what y is, it's not going to be 1. So that is the negation. 
so pretty much we just flip everything uh, this uh, every z there's this a y there's this an x just that t x y z remember we have to negate the statement right yeah so that is the negation of quantifying of nested quantifiers and with that we finish section 1.5 uh, thank you for watching see you in another video and discreet man